How you doing guys? So first of all, I want to say I'm honored to be here. Last time I was here was two years ago when the uh, Matthew Pacino Foundation put together a trike for me. I know a lot of you guys were here then. So uh, glad to see everybody back out here. And I was asked to do a quick prayer for you guys because the funny thing is Matthew actually is the first one that got me going back to church in basic training. So I don't know if people may not know that about him, but I saw him going to church. So to explain it on Sundays and basic training in the army is basically you get to either sleep in an extra hour or you get up and you go to church right it's you don't really get out of anything by going to church and one day I got up late and I saw Matt coming back I don't know what he was doing and I thought he was crazy you know what are you doing you get to sleep an extra hour and he explained to me oh he's just going to church uh, you should come with me next week and I had uh, gone to church prior to join the service but just kind of lost touch with it and I started going back to the services with them through basic training and so in the wisdom of the military being the last name of PA and PU for Matt we became instant best friends right so we met first day of reception battalion getting off the bus having drill sergeants scream at us um, he was just a face then but standing next to each other trying to figure out um, which way was north which way was south because you know they're just screaming at you with impossible instructions and so you figure it out and we became friends through basic training, we ended up actually going to airborne school together, going to uh, selection together for special forces, roommates throughout the qualification course. And we spent a lot of time just standing in formation. I'm sure if you're familiar with the hurry up and wait, get in formation by 6 a.m. and nobody else shows up till nine, but you're there and you're talking to the guy next to you. And um, you know, it's, it's with great respect to his family that's here, but over those years, uh, Matt became a brother of mine. And I, I learned a lot about him and he learned a lot about me and so I just wanted to share a bit how I feel and about why we're here and how I think he felt because I think a lot of the times we get a little off target thinking that somebody with faith in God can't you know stand up and drop the hammer with me be and that was that guy he could he could do it all and so um, I was, I was blown up, I was injured by an IED in 2005, got back to the States in 2006, and uh, he came to visit me in the hospital, of course. I think he was already on a little uh, stint being out of the active duty before he went back into the 20th Special Forces Group. And uh, I was out of the fight, but I obviously wasn't out of Matt's mind. He was one of the first people to come see me. His family really kind of circled the wagons around me. This was before the foundation even existed and really did what they could to help me out. And uh, the, one of the last communications I had with Matt was uh, over social media, of course. But, uh, you know, I was asking him, you know, when he was going back and he said he's on his way now. And I, you know, of course told him, you know, be safe. And he says, I will, I'm going back to get those guys that got you, right? We'll stack them like cordwood was I think his term. And uh, that was Matthew, right? Even though he had faith, he had God in his heart, he was willing to stand up against what he thought was wrong. And he exemplified the motto of the Special Forces, which is Deo Presso Vi Bear. He couldn't see anybody oppressed. If anybody was, he'd be the one to stand up and push back. And if it was friends, family, fellow countrymen, he didn't even know, but he was gonna be the man on the front lines doing what he had to do. And, you know, why did he do this? Because he was a protector. That's who he was, that's what was in his heart. and. He wasn't gonna fight it, he figured it out and he made the most of it. He understood that we're all ultimately called on to protect our family and the church. And I tell you that they're, they're really the same thing, right? So Ephesians 2.19 tells us that Christ Jesus himself being a cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into the holy temple of the Lord. And in him, you're also being built together into a dwelling place for the God for the spirit. So if we're the church, right? then we're called to defend it and drive those from it that would defile it, which would be us, and prevent us from having our faith, right? Matthew 21 tells us that Jesus went into the temple and he overturned tables of the money changers. He drove people out. And John actually describes that he made a whip out of cords and chased people out, yelling at them, flipping tables. So I don't know I, I know that we're all told to turn the other cheek, right? But I'm much more of an Old Testament man where sometimes you have to stand up and do something about it. And 
there's also a time for anger. And as we see, even with Jesus, there's a time for those like Matthew to drive those who would def defile or destroy us, which are his church. So I don't know how you'd interpret his actions, but to me, chasing people from a building with a whip, yelling, flipping tables, is decisive violence of action, right? That's what we're told in the military. You make up your mind and you go do it, and you do it hard and you do it swift, and that's exactly what he did. So if you don't mind, let's say a quick prayer for the bikes here, for the ride, and for Matthew and for his family, and then we'll get on our way. Lord, we're all here to remember Matthew and to thank him for his family, or thank him and his family for sacrifices in the name of you and our country, and thank you for all those service members that are here today, past, present, and future. We thank you for Matthew and those like him that are willing to stand up for their family and their church, Lord. We're here today in yours and Matthew's presence to give thanks and to celebrate what you, Lord, have done and continue to provide for us. Please give us the knowledge to know when it's time to turn the other cheek and when it's time to stand up and protect each other. And give us the courage to act on your message as Matthew did. Lastly, keep us all safe today. Bless these riders. Bless us to have a great day today. And thank you for having Matthew be in our presence today. And it's your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.